Welcome back to people to a good holiday star as a full boyfriend. The shower's cracked, we're all hype, let's go. Well, it did crack, but it looks a little subpar. Those cracks must be from Miru and Kaku. Probably. We don't have much time, so we'll go rescue the others. Please reconsider where we're gone, Doctor. Well, we shall see. Ho, ho, ho. This is no time for ho, 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 flathetic. I do hope he decides to help us. The infirmary would be awfully lonely without the murderous flathetic around. Miss Pigeon. Yes, we've got company. Ding. Greetings, travelers. Jeez, we've already decided to go home. No one likes a host who tries to lock you in their house and make you stay forever. How many of these vague see-through citizens are there anyway? You all should try talking to the king too. Only a tyrant would want to try to stop visitors from leaving, right? Have you all been here with that king forever? No, we haven't. We are the same as you. So you came from outside? You must have been the same. We were very afraid when we came here. Afraid? Nageki and I had a nice time coming here on a comfortable train with a friendly conductor. I don't remember being afraid of anything. If you came from outside, you have homes to return to, right? Why are you staying here? Because we don't have to worry about anything. Because there's nothing scary here. The king said, the king is all, and all are the king. Triple exclamation. Soon you guessed from away will be the king too. All are the king. So there is nothing scary here. Everyone is together. Let's be together. The king is waiting on his royal throne. But the king, the king glances nervously at Nageki. The king does not want to be friends with that morning dove. You don't have to come. That's not very nice of you. The king commanded you shall stay away. The kings fade into the darkness, leaving their selfish command behind. Wow, Nageki, from the look on his face, I bet the king is changing his royal underwear right about now. He's a bit of a crybaby. I don't think scaring him is very hard. I do wonder about it, though. Why was he so afraid of Nageki? The migrant says something about that, too. Maybe you're the king's natural enemy? Let's hope so. And... Those vague citizens turned into the king and disappeared. If what they said is true, perhaps everyone who stays here ends up turning into the king. That's a bit much. What is this, a horror movie? At least it sounds like he's waiting for us. We've got to go find the others and then teach him a thing or two about international travel laws. Not much variety in the decor here. I must say I'm getting a little sick of it. Wonder how things are going on the roof. I could probably trust Mr. One, Leone, rather to keep my body from spontaneously combusting or anything like that. That artistic scientist fellow's probably cleared the clouds away. But the king of this place blocked the moonlight. A search and rescue mission in a zone of total surrealism, eh? This is no even to me. The decorated picture book. Let's see what we got this time. Once there was a beautiful piano. The piano was decorated with gemstones in all the colours of the rainbow. Oh, how it sparkled and glittered. Everyone told it was beautiful. What a beautiful piano. No one had ever seen such a wonderful piano before. The piano's owner was very pleased and decorated the piano even more. Everyone in all the land praised the piano's beauty. No one from anywhere wanted to hear its voice. But the gemstones were heavy, so heavy, and one day they crushed the piano flat. Poor piano, poor piano. What is this trash? Is there no limit to its vulgarity? The composition is poor, the story juvenile, and the art messy. I opened the door to find a fantail angrily beating a book on the floor. Salutations, Sequoia. I'm glad to see you're still yourself. 
What? This isn't no getting rid of you. What now? The tea party's already over? Is it? Is it? That's too bad. I was really looking forward to drinking some of your tea too. I wouldn't have given you anything, even if you had showed up on time. I really want tea. It's got to be tea time in about 10 minutes, I think. Don't get full of yourself, mongrel. I'll be expecting an invitation card next time too. Sequoia sticks his beak in the air and coos irritably. By the way, what were you reading just now? I pick up the book which Sequoia had thrown on the floor. I haven't the slightest. Do you remember where you found it? Do not treat me like a child. The king gave it to me. I do not mean to insult a gift of royalty, but that thing is amazing. It is like the scribbles of a deranged child. A picture book, eh? So this is a little flirtation from the king, or rather an invitation to stay here. I suppose it's meant to paint reality in a poor light to flatter the world of dreams. Alas, its message appears to have been lost on Sequoia. Something is wrong with someone who dresses a musical instrument up like a Christmas tree. Instruments come with their own beauty already built in. Gaudiness is hardly the deciding factor in an instrument's value. Indeed, an instrument covered in sparkly dewdraws to impress uncultured force is the epitome of crassness. Decorating an instrument to the detriment of its tone is absurd, ludicrous. If the author of this drive, Drivel, was here now, I would sit him down and lecture him for three days without break. He continues on, angrily exposing the qualities of musical timbre. I wonder if he realises just how much he cares about music. As his brother, I can only hope to see the magnificent blooming of that enthusiasm one day in the real world. Very true, visual flair is hardly what an instrument is there for. The piano in here should have used his voice to let everyone know what that before he got crushed. I wasn't created to be decorated. Let me sing. Something like that. Why are you smirking like that? What a distasteful cretin you are. I love how thick-headed you are, Sequoia. It will save me a lot of trouble. What? What is this? Do you mock me? No, quite the opposite. That was praise. I doubt it. Your ridiculous facial expression is proof of your deceit. Forgive me, I was born with it. What am I to do? Now then, I can't spend too much time here. I doubt whoever I run into next will be as easy as you after all. I knew you didn't just wander here by chance. Tell me what is happening. You're always good at keeping things moving. Thanks, Sequoia. What? You do not jest? It's hard to believe, but unfortunately it's true. You and I are hooked together with a whole pile of electrical wires right now. You cad. Without my permission? You weren't exactly being responsive. And it's an emergency anyway. Easier to ask forgiveness than approval, right? Ah, now then, Sequoia. Will you spend eternity having tea here with that cheerful, artistically challenged king? Inconceivable, I will not stand for it. Another crack. Just who do you think I am? I am Shurugani Sequoia Labal. It is completely out of the question. I demand to see the man responsible for this idiocy at once. There's so much slapping in this chapter. I shall have recom through his gross discourtesy towards me. Sequoia runs off into the darkness, an aura of unusual proactivity about him. No one gets the better of my little brother. Now then, who's next? Picture book? Yep, the black and white picture book. Once upon a time there lived the white dove and the black dove. The white dove loved the sunflower. The black dove loved the sunflower too. What a beautiful sunflower it was. It was a warm and bright as the sun itself. The sunflower would go out and play with the doves all day long. But one day, the sunflower made friends with a star. And after that, the sunflower always went out at night. Without the sunflower, as bright as the sun to light them, the days became dark. The white dove knew how nice the night star was and became sad and more sad and cried. The black dove thought the night star should turn into a shooting star and go disappear somewhere far away. Things would be better then. 
but in the end both doves froze in the darkness and died. Poor doves. Poor doves. Hmm. This one's just as bad as the last one. Not my style at all. What did you think of it? Kirara Ryota. Dot dot dot. The king said you have done nothing wrong. You were the one who found the treasure first. That doesn't mean anything. How I feel doesn't matter. Looks like he's more interested in talking to the king than to me. Guess I'm still just not charming enough. The king said that Morning Dove is a bad, bad bird. That Morning Dove wants to steal something precious from the king. And from you. You must know already that that Morning Dove is an evil, evil demon. Nageki is a ghost, but he's not evil. I guess he can be scary if you make a mess of the library books, but... The king said, but you are very afraid of him, are you not? Because you can tell that your greatest treasure will be taken far, far away. If you join the king, you will not be afraid of anything anymore. The evil demon will be gone then. The king is waiting for you. After a lot of smarmy babbling, the king disappears. Salutations, O oh troubled young pigeon. Mind if I join you for a bit? Oh, you're yeah. So you've ended up here too? I thought it was just us. Well, I wasn't exactly invited. You know how it is. I'm here to rescue you all. Blah, 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 blah. Please decide to burst out of here and come home with me as soon as possible. Dot, dot, dot. I see. So we're all in the same dream after all. So it's not just something I'm imagining all by myself. By all indications, yes. The king there is the host and the creator of this charade. And you're all guests. And I'm crashing the party. Everyone dreaming the same dream beneath the starry night sky. Very romantic. So, are you still caught up in this dream? I don't... I don't know. I don't know what I want anymore. It's very painful. And when I wake up, it might just end up even more painful. From what little I saw of the king's sol solicitations, I can guess pretty easily what he means. And I am a bit of a specialist in that area. You know by now what it is that's causing your pain, right? Dot dot dot. I... I haven't done... Talk to me, Ryota. I'm here for you and I can help you. What's bothering you? What are you afraid of? Once you've put it into the words, you'll know exactly what you need to do. That's what I think anyway. That's why I talk so much all the time. It seems reasonable, doesn't it? At this rate, you'll rot from the inside quite literally at that. Be brave, Ryota. Um, I'm afraid of local not being with me, even in this dream. I always worry too much, and at first I thought this dream was just me being scared that someday she'll leave me behind. But I guess that's not it. The local I saw here is the real local. His eyes flicker about nervously. What he says is true, even though this is a dream. Local is acting of her own accord. Local has been with me ever since we were children. We've been together so long, I just... Somewhere along the line, I started thinking it would stay like that forever. But it won't. It never would. It was all... Just my imagination. All of it. His eyes glisten with tears. Ah, how brightly his innocence shines to one as worldly and jaded as myself. He probably hasn't even realised that what he's feeling... Is love. I took it all for granted. I thought it would last forever. But that's not possible. And I'm going to have to end it here on this deeply emotional part. I'll see you very soon. To the pit.